Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. I hope you're all doing well. Um, and firstly, welcome to the channel if it's your first time. Um, you may remember a few videos back, we made this frog with tadpoles uh, in, I suppose, ready to give birth, almost a pregnant little frog. Um, and it came out really well, and I was really happy with the project. But I've just managed to get some iridescent glow-in-the-dark powders through from uh, Timu. And I thought it'd be interesting to see if I could utilize those in a frog, uh, but also try uh, a bit of almost mandala dot work on it as well to see what we can come out with. So it's almost like using the raindrop effect, if you've seen that, but with some of these iridescent powders. And I thought I would use the same colors that I used in the last coaster video as well, because they came out amazing. So if that's what you're interested in, you want to see what this frog comes out like, it's a six hour project, but I'm gonna reduce it down to about a 20, 30 minute video for you guys. So let's get straight to it. So here we are back in the workshop. You're gonna need one of these frog molds and I thought it'd be fun to do a reptile at the same time because I've not done one of these lizards before. First thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is the eyes because that makes all the difference in these pieces. I'm going to be using this uh, bronze and papaya uh, mica powder that I mixed as well because I really like the colour. Um, some, you're going to need some UV resin to create the eyes and the design. And the coffee because this is going to take a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, first things first, uh, starting to think about the eyes and how small they, they, they actually are. Now I know that the, um, the frog ones are these ones right here. Um, and I'm hoping that these will fit the lizard, these smaller ones. Um, so just going to create the eyes first of all. If you saw the last frog video, you can fast forward because it's exactly the same process. So I'm going to be putting a tiny bit of UV resin in first of all to create a bit of a layer, a barrier. And again, naturally on an eye, I think you get that sort of clear layer. Um, and that's what I'm trying to sort of uh, replicate here. So just literally the tiniest of drops in there, then we're going to cure it. shouldn't take long to cure, probably about 10-20 seconds. I'm also going to be using some of these iridescent powders in there because I think it'd be really cool to see what they look like in the frog design and trying to do a bit of mandala dot work because I've seen a lot of that going around and I haven't tried it yet and I'm really uh, interested to try it. So all I'm doing here is just mixing a bit of the UV resin with a little bit of black, black mica powder. And then we're going to create that slit that you naturally get on like a reptilian eye. Just mixing it with a toothpick in this spare square coaster mold that I've got lying around. And you just want to mix it so that the mic is nicely mixed with the UV resin and creates black. The hardest thing in this video for me is going to be editing it down from six hours, what the project took, down to uh, a watchable video. While just trying to put that little line going from top to bottom on that piece of UV that we've already cured. And you may need a few attempts at this just to make sure that you're happy with the look and that you give the, uh, the resin enough time to drip off the toothpick, but pretty straightforward. And you want them to look similar. They don't have to be identical, but you want them to look as similar as possible so that when they're in the piece, um, they look identical, I suppose. And these tiny ones were really hard to do because they were so small. But was reasonably happy with that. And then it's just going to be a case of curing. Now for the bulk of the eye, just using another corner of the coaster. And I'm going to mix in some of this iridescent powder because I thought it'd be quite cool if the eyes actually glowed as well. Um, so just mixing in a small amount of that with the UV resin, um, hoping that there's going to be enough to fill those eye sockets. In the previous video, I did use some chameleon powder, which came out with some great effects on the eyes as well. Uh, but in this one, I just thought I'd go with the iridescent glow powder. There we go. And now it's mixed, just adding it into the mold and trying to fill those cavities pretty much full. Uh, now I did find out at the end that with these reptiles you could probably get away with doing it half full um, because the eyes 
um, in this jewelry mold are too wide probably uh, but it didn't matter because I was going to fill it with resin anyway um, and you would only see the outer bit but you probably could get away with half filling these rather than filling them all the way to the top. So that's hopefully uh, the reptile eyes, eyes done and then to uh, add it into the frog. I thought I'd probably need a little bit more resin for this. Um, so uh, just added a bit more UV resin and a bit more of the pigment powder to make sure that I had enough to fill those eye, ca well, eye cavities, I suppose, in the uh, jewelry mold. And that's the thing, you're always better off mixing while you've still got a little bit left. And then the color shift, if there is any, isn't as dramatic. So you want to keep it roughly the same. the filled uh, it's just a case of curing them and when you're working with UV resin guys always do both sides to make sure that it fully cures um, so make sure that you cure both sides and then you get a good solid piece that you know is cured all the way through and there we go that both sides cured and I was reasonably happy with these eyes when I looked at them. Uh, they looked reasonably symmetrical, which is what I was looking for. So that's the eyes done. Just going to pop those out. Now you can water cure these if you want to. Um, I was going to be putting them into a bigger mold anyway, so I didn't see the point. Um, but yeah, I was, I was pretty happy. Hopefully they'll fit the molds, um, especially these tiny ones for the uh, lizard. And if you look, it looks like a tiny little reptilian eye, or at least it does to me anyway. <laughs> and now just to figure out how to get them in the mold, um, I'm going to be dotting a tiny bit of UV resin in the cavity um, and then trying to place um, the eyeball that we've just made into that cavity and then curing it. Now, an important thing to remember here is you want both eyes going in the same direction. And this is really fiddly, to be honest with you. It took me a little while, uh, but in the end, we got there. I'm just gonna show you on camera or try and show you, this is the way that I wanted the eyes to go. And you're better off doing one at a time. Don't try and do two at a time because one might slip out. So now that's in the mold, just gonna cure it. And it shouldn't take too long, probably about 20, 30 seconds but you wanna make sure it is cured all the way through um, so that it stays attached to the mold when you fill it. So the great thing about mixing the uh, UV resin and the epoxy is you get to do these little designs or whatever you want before you actually fill the piece, uh, which is what gives you that detail. So just again, I try and move the mold all the way around just to make sure it's fully cured. Here, I'm just maneuvering the eyeball around so I get it roughly the same direction as the first eye. It's so important because if you get one that's completely the opposite way around, it will look silly when it's finished. So again, got them both roughly in about the same sort of direction and then just curing the second eye. And there we go. I was reasonably happy with that. They look like eyes and they actually look like they was looking directly at me, which is <laughs> uh, the look that I wanted. So that was good. And then I'm going to repeat the process once this is done for the frog. What I'm going to do is just fast forward that process because it is exactly the same, except for the fact that we're using those bigger eyeballs. And there we go, eyeballs in. I was happy with this. Um, I thought they looked reasonably even and they were looking straight at me. So that was the lizard eyes and then the frog as well. Really happy with those. They look like little frog eyes. And now for the next stage, I'm going to use this papaya and bronze mica powder that I mixed together, um, just putting in some UV resin with it. Now, this is going to be where it starts getting the long winded process because it's about getting that design in. But because of the shape of the mold, you're going to have to cure a lot in between. Otherwise, your dots are just going to turn into drips. So um, all I'm doing here is just adding some UV uh, resin to the powder and then I'm going to mix it together. 
don't be afraid to mix your colors together as well. I think it's an amazing thing to do because it makes the piece truly unique and individual and it means that nobody else has that color in their piece. Look at that color, it's stunning. So I decided to mix up the other color as well, which was just iridescent yellow. And then I'm going in with this little dabber um, for the center circle, uh, first of all, because I wanted to keep it reasonably central. And I'm just putting a decent size blob, I suppose you would call it. Um, and then I'm gonna cure it. And then that's what I'm gonna use for the whole design as my center point. Wanted to put one in the head as well, which was straight, um, I suppose, in a parallel line so that I knew that, again, I could put a design in the head, one in the center of the body as well, so it looked reasonably symmetrical. Then you're just going to want to cure as you go. Um, and if you try and do too much, they will drip into each other and you won't be able to do it. So I'm going to fast forward this process a little bit so it's not a three hour video. Try and give you a bit of a close up of what I'm trying to do here. You can see that one inside the head and you can see that one on the center on the back. Um, and now I'm going to try and go around it in a circle of dots um, with this glow in the dark pigment that I've mixed up. I remembered I hadn't done anything with the toes, so I just thought I'd make the toes the same color, this papaya and bronze mix. So just putting a little drop in each of those toes and then curing. And if you're still with us guys at this point, please do me a favor, just click the subscribe button, like it, share it, put a comment in. Um, it all helps the channel grow. It helps basically YouTube know that you're enjoying the content and send it out to more people to hopefully grow the channel further. So if you've got two minutes or two seconds even, just click on that subscribe button, put something in comments, whether you're liking the content. You know what, if there's something you wanna see us do as well, put that in com uh, comments as well and we'll try and make it happen. We're all about epoxy, all about doing different experiments, seeing what different results we can get. And then I was just checking it to make sure I was happy with it. Reasonably happy, we got all the toes in there. Uh, the eyes are still looking great and that center dot is still there. So now it's a case of trying to go around those circles with the bright yellow pigment powder and seeing if that works. The first uh, dot too close to the center dot, so it actually joined, so I wasn't happy with it. So I just got a baby wipe and a bit of alcohol and wiped it out and started again. That's the great thing with the UV, you can just wipe it off if you're not happy with the, uh, the result you get. Um, and it's just a case of taking it steady because this is very finicky um, and to make it look good, you don't want all the blobs mixing together or maybe you do, it depends on what effect you want. But again, just wipe it out and then start again if you make a mistake. And I decided rather than using the dotting tool, I just wanted to use a toothpick because I thought I would get a little bit more um, detail. And now hopefully you can see why this is so fiddly. Um, <laughs> each individual dot you pretty much have to put into place. I decided to try two or three at once um, and cure it rather than just doing one at a time. Otherwise it wouldn't have been a six hour project. It would have been a 60 hour project, but trying to get them reasonably evenly spaced as well. And as you saw there, that big one just dripped off of the toothpick. So again, it's starting to merge with the middle. Um, so I had to wipe that off and then continue going round. Did not want that blobby effect. Did a little bit less resin to the toothpick this time and just did one tiny dot first. Was happy with that, thought I'd cure it and then uh, make sure that we can uh, continue going around to make sure that uh, everything is reasonably symmetrical. So I was starting to get used to the way that the resin flowed off the toothpick. I started doing sort of two or three at a time and then curing. Um, got a little bit braver, you might say. <laughs> Um, but again, if you make a mistake, the beauty is just wipe it off and do it again. And do you know what? The more time you take, the more patience you have, the better it's going to look, the more symmetrical it's going to look. What I'm going to do here is just speed up the process sort of 50 times so that you guys don't have to uh, watch a six hour long video. And hopefully you'll still see the progress as it happens. Mm. 
you can see, I'm just going around it with the other color as well to try and create a bit of a mandala dot pattern. Um, again, I'm not a mandala artist or anything like that, but I've seen some videos. It looks pretty cool. And that's the design I wanted to go for with this little frog. Until you've done it, you won't realize just how fiddly it is to try and get them reasonably even um, and get them inside that head as well. That was really difficult. Uh, and try and keep everything reasonably symmetrical because I think that's the key to it. And at this point, I was really happy with the way it was looking. And to say it was my first attempt at any kind of mandala work, I thought it looked really, really good. Um, so just decided to give it another quick cure. Um, I was happy with the way that things looked and the general design. And then to move on to the lizard where I did a slightly different design. Uh, but again, I'm gonna speed through that so you don't have to sit here on a three hour video. But let me know what you think in comments. Uh, do you like the design we went with? Uh, would you have done something different? Uh, do you think it is Mandela dot work? Or <laughs> is it just random dots that I've put on a frog? Who knows? And at this point was really happy with the design I'd got on the lizard as well. Something slightly different to the frog. Uh, so just giving it a final cure. And then I still had some of the EV resin left. So I thought I'd just whack it in this jewelry mold, see if it created a cool effect uh, for a pendant. Um, just giving it a wipe over. And then I'm gonna fill a couple of these pendants with the glow in the dark resin and the bronze resin. I'm going to do it in different orders as well in sort of a puddle pour so we can see if it makes a different effect. And we'll see what they look like at D-Mold. But back to the frog and the uh, lizard. I'm going to be using uh, some chameleon powder, just dusting them around uh, before I add the black uh, epoxy. So just selecting the colors now. I wanted to go with two different colors for each one as well, just to get some different effects. And these chameleon powders are from Let's Resin. Um, and I wanted sort of a pinkish hue, but mixed with purple, I think, for the lizard, and then a bluey green for the frog. And it's pretty straightforward because the chameleon powders actually stick to the silicone on the mold. So it's just a case of getting yourself a brush um, getting the chameleon powder and brushing it on where you want. Again, I'm gonna speed up this process uh, just to try and speed up the video, but I'm just using a brush. I've seen some artists use uh, makeup brushes as well, which apparently work better. I haven't got any, so I'm just gonna use what I've got. And you wanna make sure that every piece of the silicone mold is covered, because if not, as soon as you uh, add in the epoxy and then demold, it will become apparent the bits that you've missed. So just brush absolutely everywhere over with the chameleon powder.
And at this point, I was really happy with the way that they were looking. I've gone everywhere covered uh, in that chameleon powder. Now it's just a case of mixing up some resin and filling them. And at this point, always have some spare molds at the side as well, um, because if you if you're like me, you'll always mix up a little bit too much um, whenever you do it. So just trying to keep the, the, the workstation clean as well before I mix the resin. And then it's pretty straightforward. You're going to be mixing around about seven ounces uh, of resin. Uh, these have now cured, so these will be interesting to demold and see if we've got any interesting effects. And I'm going to be using this cheap Jam Chun resin that I got from Timu, um, just because it shouldn't really matter the quality um, when I fill these moulds. Now, whenever I, I put black in something, I always add a little bit of something as well, so it's not just pure black. And I think that gives it a slightly different effect. I decided to add some blue iridescent nail powder um, to the black mica powder uh, and the resin um, just to give it a slight different shimmer so it just doesn't look plain black. And as you can see, it just gives it that slight shimmer so it just doesn't look plain black and actually it almost came out green the blue iridescent powder against the black which actually i thought would be quite good for a frog or a lizard um, but i've also got these spare molds next to it as well in case i've mixed up too much uh, so the teddy bear and also the snail and just adding some chameleon alcohol inks that I've made uh, to those molds in case I've got too much, just to give it a slightly different effect as well. If you've not seen the video where we made those, check it out. Um, they're, they're amazing. I love my chameleon alcohol inks and I use them in a lot of projects. The thought I might as well back these pendants at the same time in case we get some cool effects and I want to use them as jewelry. this snail as well uh, I've seen a lot of people have had problems with these molds and the reason why is those antennas so those antennas like to keep air bubbles in there which if you just leave them in there when you piece cures they'll just snap off so what I did here is I just gave it a good squeeze in the antennas specifically to try and release that air bubble um, which didn't actually work that well so what I ended up doing was just putting at the end of my paintbrush in them as well and I suppose forcing that air bubble out once it had come out, I could see that the antennas had filled up with the resin um, and we were good to go for the cure. So just keep squeezing it until that air bubble is gone and you see those antennas completely fill with resin. As long as it's done that, it should cure and you should be good to go. Finish them off and just add a little bit of something extra. I thought I'd add a bit more of that chameleon alcohol ink that I'd made um, just to the backs of the pendants, also to the bottom of the snail and to the teddy bear just to see how, how it looks. Don't forget to uh, burn off your air bubbles as well before you leave them for 24 hours to cure. And then we'll be back for the demold. Um, just before we, we get to that, if you've enjoyed the video, if you've learned anything, please like and subscribe to the channel and we will keep the content coming. So here we go, guys. It's the next day and it's demold day and I am excited for this one. Uh, the amount of time I spent on this frog, I just really hope he turns out right. Um, but it should be quite an interesting one as well because I've never used the, um, the lizard mold before. Um, and I've never done the snail mold. Now, what I did find with this, 
is there was trapped bubbles in these little antennae. So what I had to keep doing was I poked the end of a um, paintbrush down there and kept on squeezing it until that bubble had come out to the top. Um, and I think if I hadn't have done that, it would have ruined the effect. But hopefully these have turned out um, and we'll see. Um, so we'll start off with the, the pendants, which again was just a spare and see what they came out like. Again, that just looks like it's that lovely bronze colour that we made that's sort of taken over everything. Um, but again, it's, it's nice. So that this side was the side that we did the, the bronze first. And if you look at that, I've got a dint from the UV. Um, I don't know if that will fix itself or not. So I'm going to leave that in the sun um, and see what happens. But again, I suppose it's because I didn't do it in thin layers and I just did it in one go, which you're not supposed to do with UV. And the same's happened with the big one. If you see that little wrinkle there, that is where it's not fully cured. And it's because I didn't do it in smaller, thinner layers. So that's a lesson for everyone. With UV, you've got to cure it in small, thin layers rather than doing it in one big layer. Um, otherwise you get this wrinkly effect where it hasn't fully cured. I am still gonna leave them in the sun um, and see what happens. And then these three were the three that we did um, where it was almost that glow in the dark sort of yellow pigment first. Oh, that's that's different. And actually that one's fully cured. Um, I like that. And actually I, I'm gonna put the light on it in a second and see what it glows like. But that is um, different. And it's just that yellow sort of glow in the dark. And that's fully cured as well, that's solid. Um, so. Hmm, interesting. Maybe the, the mica was what stopped the others from fully curing. Again, a little bit of the blacks seem to have crept through that. But again, I don't think it takes away from the effect. I really like that. And I think they're gonna really pop when I put the light on them. And again, the big one's fully cured as well. And that looks lovely. I'm hoping that these glow really well because again, for me, on a night out or something like that, that would look amazing if it glows. So without further ado, I suppose, let's have a look at these three. In fact, let's look at all of them um, under the light and see what happens. So I'm just gonna use my UV light for this because uh, obviously in order for them to get any charge, they're gonna have to stay in the sunlight all day to see if we actually get a glow in the dark effect. But Wow, <laughs> look at that. I think they are really cool. Let me know what you think in comments, but I think they are stunning. Just with that bronze coming through and then that glow in the dark pigment. If that glows in the dark as well, I'm gonna be delighted. So that's those. And I'm just wondering if, when these are fully cured or whatever I do with them, um, if the glow in the dark will actually seep through. I don't think it will, but there's still little bits. So, don't know, we might get a cool effect. That one there looks okay. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna use the glow in the dark pigment with a strong mica, make sure that the, uh, the glow in the dark pigment goes in the, uh, the mold first. Okay, next I'm gonna do this teddy bear, which again was just the spare black that I had with some of those chameleon alcohol inks. So let's see what he turned out like. <laughs> I think that is really cool. Great little keyring, I think. Um, yeah, really cool little piece. Where should we go next? Let's go with a snail. Now I've, I've heard that these are quite hard to demold so we'll see the good thing is he's fully cured and again this was just some of those chameleon alcohol inks um, with some of the spare black um, mica powder with some, well, with some of the chameleon powder in it as well so we will see now I'm just hoping not to break any of those antennae Oh, there we go. Perfect. Look at him. 
all of the antennae there. We didn't get any of the bubbles. Just a really cool piece, I think, just to use up that spare. Um, can't really see much of the Chameleon alcohol links apart from there on the shell. Maybe I could have put some more on. Um, but for a first snail, I quite like that. And it's got a lovely shine to it. Right, where should we go next? Let's go with this guy, the lizard. Um, and interestingly, this was my first lizard, so I'll be intrigued. And again, I tried to get the same effect that I was going for with the frogs. So, don't know how's best to demold these. I'm guessing it's similar to a frog, where we wanna get the feet loose first. The feet are tiny on these as well. So, again, just taking a little bit of extra care because I don't wanna snap them off. Absolutely tiny little feet, and then I'm just going to try and pull it away, and hopefully, we'll get a nice lizard. And again, it was the first test with those small eyes that I managed to make, uh, similar to the frog eyes, but it's the smallest ones I've got in my jewelry mold, and I'm just hoping they were roughly the right size. Well, it seems to be coming out pretty easily, actually, he says. So from the back to the head, and then just gently pry it away from the head. And hopefully, oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Look at him. The eyes actually worked really well. Look at that. I'm really happy with him. And again, that design seems to have gone well. I'm really happy with that. Um, will he light up? which was the whole point. So, but I'm loving the colors there from the different chameleon powders. Let's have a look at him. Wow, look at that. Absolutely stunning. Just shows if you take your time with something, they look absolutely amazing. I'm really happy with them. Just that facial expression with that eye looks so realistic. Um, yeah. So my first lizard, I think you would say is a success, hopefully. Now for the big one, the frog. And these are always a bit of a pain to get out. Um, what I try and do is just loosen all of the toes first so that you're not risking snapping them off. And trying to be as gentle as possible, but detaching them from the mold. So there's no chance, hopefully, of you snapping the, uh, the toes off because they're normally the softest parts. The way that epoxy cures is the, the deepest parts cure first and then the thinnest parts take longer to cure. So let's have a look. Oh, it's coming free, okay. And again, if you've never done a frog before, you don't fill these bits in. <laughs> I did that on the first one. Um, but yeah, he's coming away okay, actually. Ooh. And then we got the head. So again, just trying to loosen it as much as possible from the rest of the mold. And they're always a little bit fiddly frogs. I think it's just the shape, to be honest. And once you've got traction though, and it loosens it all up, that's where, there we go. So use the mold itself to loosen it and then just slide it off. Wow, look at that. Almost got that mandala dot design. Um, absolutely love this guy. We could, could be a new favorite froggy. What do you think? Again, the eyes worked with him as well. Really like that. And I think the colors as well, absolutely stunning. Those purple hues, those greens. Um, let's see what he looks like lit up. Wow, look at that. Absolutely stunning. 
What do you think? I think that that for me is my favorite frog so far. Took a lot of time, but was it worth it? I think it was. Um, let me know what you think. Um, and apart from that, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, and we'll see you on the next one.